when it comes to product backlog refinement, there is one topic that I don't think I've met a single product owner or even practitioner that says, this is easy. This is my favorite part. I knock it out the park every single time. And that's creating goals. Creating goals is super tricky, but super important. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why they're so important and how they play such an important part in enabling you to succeed with your business. First of all, well, you should have some kind of vision. You should have an understanding of what does winning look like? Additionally, in order to get to your vision, because your vision could be many years away or a lifetime away, you should have a strategy. The strategy, it's what tells you, well, what will help us win and how will it help us win? Right? That is what a strategy should answer. It is the thing that says, this is the thing that separates us from everyone else that enables us to achieve our vision. The goals then, well, they are the things that execute on your strategy. They are the things that answer, why will achieving this help us win? This goal will help us win by executing on a part of the strategy, which is then executing on getting us closer to the vision. And how will we know that it worked? Goals have to be achievable and measurable. So with this mindset in place, so overall we're working towards a longer term future vision, something that gets us out of bed. It's the thing that means we have won, or we are winning actively. The strategy is what is going to enable us to do that, right? What will help us win and how will it do that? And the goals, they're the more practical, executable elements of that that are parts of the strategy. So creating goals then, as I already mentioned, they should be measurable and achievable. And I have two examples here of formats for creating goals, created by fantastic trainers and practitioners, because again, this is tricky. This is hard to do. And what I want to show is these two and explain why I like them. And then we're going to actually talk through some kind of do's and don'ts and some good questions you can ask yourself. And then I want to show you an example of a product goal that I created for my own business. Because, well, I practice what I preach and I actually use these tools myself. So first of all, number one, at the end of our sprint, we will share an achievement, right? Something achievable. This has, or which has a value of impact. And the impact of course being measurable. It could be binary, right? It's either true or false, or it is something in terms of a percentage improvement, a point improvement, some kind of measurable impact. And I like this one because it's focused. It's to the point, right? This is what we're gonna share and this is the impact it's delivering, right? This is what we're doing. This is why it's valuable. To the point, concise, solves the problem fantastically. The second format is our focus is on outcome. Again, achievable. We believe it delivers this impact to customers and this will be confirmed when this event happens. So both impact and event happens are potentially measurable things. It's a little bit longer. It's a bit more elaborate, but the reason I really like this one, and it actually tends to be the one I use myself, is because it also brings in the customer into it. It says, this is the outcome we're gonna try and deliver. This is how it's benefiting the customer. And this is how we will know we did it or not. And that is a wonderful format, a wonderful template that helps you ask and answer some tricky questions about why are we doing this work. And this one is better for the sprint level, of course, but the second one, it honestly could even work at the product goal level. Although again, it might be a little bit too fine detail for that. You might need to go a level up in terms of your scope and your, your hunger, so to speak, for your product goal. Now, I have, much like on TV, prepared some helpful little questions that we can ask ourselves as we go through this. The first one, and this is a very important one, is, is this goal aligned with the strategy? 
If your goal is not aligned with the strategy we're trying to execute, which is going to enable us to win and achieve our vision, why are we doing this, right? It's probably not the right goal. Let's reevaluate. The next one is, well, it's a pretty straightforward one. What is the next desired future state of the product? Is often used because it's kind of the definition of the product goal, but I even like it at a sprint goal level because, well, what is the next smaller iteration of the sprint going to get us to in terms of the state of the product? Very importantly as well, of course, is, well, how will we know it worked? Have we considered that and how we constructed the goal? Have we baked that into the goal? Have we got certain measures in place? Perhaps we're using evidence-based management to figure out what we're doing, what we're tweaking here. Why will this help us win? Why will this goal, if delivered, help us get to where we want to go? Is it executing on part of the strategy? Is it enabling a part of the vision to be true? Where yesterday it wasn't? Fantastic. More for the product goal, but also for the sprint goal. Um, how far away is it? Can we actually get there or not? It's a very important question to ask ourselves is can we actually get there in time for a product goal? Do we have enough budget, right? If this is five years away, we have a year's budget. Eh, let's look closer to home. If we have a three week sprint and the sprint goal is one week, Maybe we can be more audacious. Perhaps we can buy it off a little bit more. And then some words of caution, both for the product goal and the sprint goal. First of all, please, no ands or bullet points, right? It should be focused. It's the goal, right? It's the thing you're committing to. Whenever you add ands and or bullet points, you're diluting the purpose. You're diluting your focus which means you're actually less likely to achieve any of those things. The second thing is if you're really struggling or you're looking at a goal and you're like, hmm, is this really the right one? Ask yourself, what would your stakeholder think about their goal, right? If they were here right now, they were looking at it with you, would they think, wow, that's fantastic. I can't wait to have that. Or if you think, eh, I don't really want to pay for that. Eh, we might not have the right goal in mind. We might want to tweak it a little bit, make it sound a little bit juicier, right? Because again, your goals are commitments and they should be transparent to your stakeholders. And finally, this is one I don't hear mentioned enough is, well, do you want to achieve the goal? If you've just made a sprint goal or product goal that you don't care about, why would you do any work towards it? Make sure that when you're crafting goals, they are goals you care about, goals you want to achieve. Because if you don't, why would you get out of bed in the morning, right? Make goals you want to achieve that execute on a strategy and get you closer to achieving your vision. Now, I'm going to show you some examples of how you can play around with goals to make them more or less audacious and tweak them around a little bit. So I'll see you in a second. Now, here's one I prepared earlier, and this is uh, playing with the goals a little bit, just to show how somehow easy and impactful it can be to tweak just some small things in your goals. And this is actually a product goal that I use in my own business. I, again, I like to practice what I preach, and I like to show that just because I do it doesn't mean, one, this is not the best goal, but also, if it's enough to get you started, sometimes that's enough and then you can improve and learn how to do them better over time. And I certainly learned how to do them better over time as well. So our original goal then was that we wanted our first public course to run and we enabled this by getting 10,000 or more views on blogs and videos because, well, I don't know if you know this, but scrum.org, well, we deliver courses and help people learn about scrum and all the things agile, right? So that was our original product goal. But let's say we only had half the time to get that done. What could that goal look like then? Let's say we didn't get all the funding we wanted. Okay, well, maybe we have the first ticket sold and we enable that by 3,000 or more views on blogs and videos, right? 
still aiming towards the same direction, working towards the same strategy, contributing towards the same overall vision, we're just saying it's not going to enable the whole course to run. We're just going to validate by making sure, can we sell even a ticket? And we think we can do this by getting views on blogs and videos, which means people will know about us, which means they will find our courses because they like what they're seeing and they'll sign up. So far, so good. What if we get very lucky and we get double the funding, right? We get more money than we thought, or we get more time than we thought to get this done. Okay, let's double it. Not only are we going to have the first course run, we're going to have the course sold out. And we're going to have this enabled by 30,000 or more views on blogs and videos. So again, we think blogs and videos and getting views on those, that's the main vehicle for getting people to find us and buy our stuff. Again, contributing towards the same stuff, but in this case, we're just being more audacious in our scope. Now, you might be thinking, well, this was 10,000 views and this is 30,000 views. Why is that a different thing? Well, our idea here, and same thing here, this is not half the views, this is less than half the views, is the more views we get, it should logarithmically increase because we should be getting more and more people noticing us, more and more interest. So the more time we get, the more views we get, not in a linear scale, but in a hopefully logarithmic scale. That's what we're hoping for, continued growth. And then what if we change the variable? What if we think, okay, well, maybe, maybe blogs and videos aren't the right thing to be looking at. Maybe they're part of the puzzle, but maybe they're not the thing that's going to really get us to where we need to go. Okay, then let's look at our first public course run. So same scope again, but this time the variable we want to tweak is 500 or more visitors to the course webpage. Now what that means is we might not do any blogs or videos. According to the goal, we don't need to. Because what we're trying to do is get visitors to our web page. And that means we could do anything that would enable us to do that. Maybe it's public speaking. Maybe it's walking around in the street with a business card and a placard going, you know, go to my website. Who knows what it could be? But we're tweaking the variable, which will drastically change the kind of work, the kind of outcomes we're looking for in the rest of our product backlog. And all we did was tweak a single variable. And by doing so, we could have changed the entire product pack look. So how you construct your goals, be it the sprint goal or the product goal, will drastically influence the product or sprint backlogs. And it will also influence heavily the kinds of experiments, the kinds of work you're doing to achieve those goals. These goals necessitate blogs and videos being made. This one does not. We could still be doing that, right? That could be part of the strategy, but it might not be the whole picture. So depending on how you tweak and play with your goals, be they sprint goals or product goals, you will change the items that pull, get pulled into either the product backlog or sprint backlog. And the key thing is to validate. Continuously check in, are we making progress towards this? Is this thing actually working or not? Because let's say you get to 10,000 views on your blogs and videos, but you haven't sold a single ticket. Clearly, that is not the leading indicator for the lagging measure you would like to influence. So you need to find a different variable to tweak, which means you might need to scrap this goal and make a new one. And that is part of the learning process. So hopefully this practical example has showed you how some of the things we were just talking about comes into practice, how you might use this and leverage it. And I wish you the very best of luck. Creating goals is not easy but it is a critical part of any work. Best of luck.